Man, we tuned in back with another one and another one and another one. This is what are women really thinking? <laughs> I'm excited for this one, man. Uh, I met her a couple months ago and ever since then we've been tight. You know what I'm saying? She she always supported me uh, since the beginning, genuinely. Um, she's very opinionated. What you see is what you get. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and let her introduce herself. And while you're introducing yourself, go ahead and tell them a little bit about yourself. What's up, you guys? My name is Kadisha Alex. I am 28 years old. I currently reside in Orlando, Florida. Um, a little bit about myself is I am a hairstylist. I'm a marketer. I also do some modeling as well. Um, and I, now I'm crossing over into like the acting side. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. A little bit of everything, all right? You know, you know. So, what was your upbringing like? Where you from? I am from Trinidad and Tobago, born and raised. Um, I moved over to Florida at the age of six. Um, I grew up in West Palm Beach at first, and then I moved to Orlando at the age of 12. Okay, so you, you've you been a little, little part of every part of Florida. Yes, yes. All right. Yes. So, what was like some of the biggest like things you had to overcome as a woman moving around in all those spaces because those areas are like more male dominant so like what was your biggest thing you had to overcome mm, overcome um i would say like friends um i really couldn't keep friends like that moving around a lot um that's basically it so you have no no guys out there trying to get you um, <laughs> I mean, of course, you moving around, and I, I've learned too with me moving around. Um, you're seeing the same type of male, but you're dealing with a different type of male as well. So, like you know, Palm Beach County, they got that different type of breed over there. Um, then I then moved over here to Orlando; it's a different breed over here. So, you know. Okay, so. How was school like? What was your school life like? Was you into the books or was you more on a different type of vibe? I was definitely into the books. I am a nerd at heart. Uh, I am a teacher's pet at heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why you was a teacher's pet? Though? They love me. I mean, who don't love me? <laughs> like, go <come> on. <laughs> you know, and um, I've I, I always been very respectful. And I think that's just how um, that was just embedded in me growing up from Trinidad. Um, I feel like any island period our upbringing is just different from Americans. So it's like respect is like a number one top tier priority. So I just feel like when I came over here, um, the adults, that's something that, you know, they just liked about me. I've always been respectful, um, very straightforward, very like, okay, this is what I need to do. I'm going to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so how how was your relationship with your um your family and your parents and your siblings? How was that relationship? Um, you know, it's like like any other family. It's always up and down. Um, I came from a very strong minded home. Everybody is very strong minded. Um, have very strongly opinionated and stuff like that. And that you know comes from well, that has a lot to do with how I am as a woman today. So. Of course, when you have, I grew up with five sisters. I'm the mm -hmm. oldest, so it's like, and we are all strong-headed. So it's just like it's a lot of, you know, in the house all the time. So what was like the biggest thing y'all fought over? Cause it's five girls now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I grew up. I got five brothers. Well, I got more than five brothers, but I grew up with like all five of my brothers. So I know our struggles. But what was like something y'all uh, used to fight over? TV, combs. Nah. Clothes, what, what was y'all fighting over? It was little shit. Like, it was more on respect. Like, <laughs> we fighting over respect. We we fighting over who who's the big dog in the house. That's what we be fighting over. Uh, yeah, it was always been like that. Everybody want, 
Everybody want to be the, you know, the big dog. Everybody want to, <laughs> you know. So how was it being the oldest? Like, you always had to fight for your respect, ain't it? Oh, yeah. I, I, I pushed you down. Yeah. Uh, so what you did? Push him down the stairs, drop kick him, jump no, a little elbow on him? I was slapping their ass. I'm wishing them. I would never, like, physically fight any one of my family members because I just feel like once you put your hands on somebody, like, physically punch, like, it's it. You know what I'm saying? Relationship, dad. I don't care who you is. So it's like, I still have the love for my sisters, but I'm a bitch em up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a punk em a little bit. Let them know, like, I'm a big dog. You feel me? Like, <laughs> don't play with me. <laughs> so how's your relationship with your parents? Um, my father, he's he's dope. Um, he's still in Trinidad. Okay. Yeah, I wow. talk to him, I would say, twice a month. And stuff like that. My mom, she she resides here, of course. Um, our relationship is very, you know, I would say business. <laughs> yeah, it always got to be like that with parents. <laughs> it's also, it's, you know what I'm saying? What you need? Okay, got you. Or I ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like that. Like, don't hit me up unless you need something. And it has to be like that. Because my mom is very opinionated. And, you know, she feels as though her kids will never grow up. Um, mm. We were really sheltered a lot, mm. so my mom can't accept the fact of us wanting to do things on our own, being independent. I've been on my own since I was 18 years old, so she really didn't know how to accept that. So, you know, you got to keep that distance. I love you, but... Yeah, most yeah. definitely. So, what, what was the struggles in overcoming moving on your own at 18? Because... I had a guest that was talking about that before. She said she moved out when she was 18. She did everything on her own. So yeah. what was, like, the biggest thing, like, the biggest accomplishment and the biggest, like, con, like, pros and cons of that? Um, well, I definitely say the biggest accomplishment is just having your own space. You know what I'm saying? You get to set your own atmosphere, um, create your own peace, all that. So right there, peace is big for me. So right there, that's the biggest accomplishment of moving on your own. Um, the cons is literally just having to be financially stable. And now you have to literally strategize yourself and you got to be the adult in your own home now, you know. Um, but when I was 18 and I did move on on my own, um, I did have help from my mom. Um, she didn't help me financially, but of course she had to go ahead and co-sign for me because I was mm -hmm. young, you know. So And I didn't have no credit and stuff like that. So she did help me in that aspect. Um, and then I took off from there. That's good. So yeah. what kept you afloat? Was you working like two jobs? What? Definitely working two jobs. I started doing hair. Um, I've been doing hair since I was 12 years old. I started oh, in Palm Beach County um, doing it, play, play, you know, and I was doing, the girls was going to the club. I'm 12 years old. They come and knock on my mama door. Uh, can your daughter curl my hair real quick? <laughs> my mom used to get so bad because she thought I was going to go to jail and get arrested. So... From there and moving on to Orlando, that just always been my passion. So I stuck with that, and um, I was able to use that to turn it into income for real, for real. And then I would work, like, little call center jobs. Um, I probably worked, like, three call center jobs my whole life. And um, I worked at Walmart one time. And the hair, um, the hair store, like the little hair store. Mm, yeah. So yeah. I would, like, juggle. I know you, yeah, I know you didn't like that Walmart. Oh, no. I was there. <laughs> I know you like that Walmart. <laughs> I was there like seven months. <laughs> yeah, because right, everybody I see at Walmart be like irritated because I, I don't know what management be doing, but they ain't, they ain't liking it. Yo, it don't be the management. It be the people. Uh, I don't, bro, like the people, experiencing people, it'll make you hate life. Oh why, God! Why like, you say that? Because I just feel as though when you're experiencing people, for for experience people like on the phone, being a little call center, you're kind of like have a good balance. You know what I'm saying? You can laugh it all, da da da. But having to deal with people face to face in person, and the shit they be saying to you, you can't laugh some stuff off sometimes. Like for example, they had me in the self checkout one time, and it was a white man and his family. Y'all had to say it like that, and his family, and I'm trying to help him. And you could tell, like, the privilege he grew up. You could tell the people that grew up a certain way and the people that grew up with respect. He didn't have no respect at all. Not for mm -hmm. a woman, not for, because he was speaking to his wife crazy, too. You know what I'm saying? Not for uh, a person of race or whatever. He just didn't have no respect. And he basically attacked me. Um, I don't remember what the man said because it was so long ago. But he basically said some foul shit. And it was low-key racist, you know? Mm -hmm. And I looked at him. 
And I was like, at that point, my head told me, fuck this job. <laughs> yeah, because I gave him a piece of mind. I don't remember what I said, but I'm not getting him a piece of mind. And he was like, I want to talk to your management. Oh, I went and got my manager for him. Hold up, stay right here. I'm going to go get him for you. Man, I'm playing with them. Hey, I mean, you know what sometimes what I'm they got to get that way. It got to. Because you know? people would just be out of pocket, out of line sometimes. So you got to put them in a place. Bro, I think it's a generation we live in, and now people don't value respect at all. I'm telling you. It's out the window. Respect is out the window. I'm telling you. I'll be saying that all the time, but, you know, you just got to let things be because when you grow up in an island household, I, I can't talk. When you grow up in an island household, it's, that's what it's like. That's yeah. one of the number one rules. You got to be respectful. Yeah. When you walk into the door, you got to say, hey, make sure you open the door for girls. Things of that nature, just little small stuff like yeah. that goes really a long way yeah. as far as, you know, you know life but people don't some people just like you said some people he probably woke up on the wrong day and just wanted to take it out on anybody shit or he probably that's just how he is because the way he responded to his wife she looked at him and was like she shut the fuck up that could be my husband because i'm not if i was married i'm not gonna allow my man to disrespect no woman in front of my face because i'm a woman so Mm -hmm. how you treat me at home you need to treat other women like that unless it's a problem and we got to go ahead and address that but in reality, just on an everyday basis, you have to respect everybody. You know what I'm saying? That's Especially facts, though. a woman. That's facts, that though. falls on, I'm supposed to be the partner. That falls back on me. And if my husband out here disrespecting all the females, they're going to look at me like, I wonder how he treat her at home. Yeah, you're right, though. That's true. Hey, this this is this is great. <laughs> I, I, like, I, like when, I like when y'all come over here and spit gems because people need to hear this. Some people don't know. These, these things because yeah. they just go into life and just do whatever. They don't understand that people pay attention to certain stuff like that. That's true. You know what I'm saying? That's so true. that that that's why I like that's why I like what you said. So now let's get into a little bit of your personal life. So dum, dum, dum. nah 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 we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna <laughs> go too crazy. So you you got a daughter. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So give us a little insight. You ain't gotta give us too much because you're very personal. So give us a little insight about your daughter. Give us, like, what your journey was with her, you know, that situation. Because that's your twin, though. That is my twin. That's my baby. <laughs> hey, Haley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would start by when I found that I was pregnant. Um, it wasn't planned. It wasn't expected. Mm-hmm. Um, one no one night stand, neither. Uh, yeah, I was Disclaimer. definitely. Yeah, I was definitely. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to put it in the fine print. I was definitely dating my baby father for a good um, almost two years. But um, I always was told I couldn't have kids because et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, mm-hmm. um, like I said, that wasn't planned. Um, so when I did find out I was pregnant, we were already broken up. You know, we decided that we were going to go our separate ways. So when I found out, it was like a curveball because it was like the last, like, you know, when you get, get that last breakup. Like, you make up and break up, make up and break up, but that last breakup, you be like, man, we, like, I'm good. It was like that, you know? And I found out I was pregnant. Um, you know, we went through the motions with that because it felt so unreal. Um, but when I got the confirmation, automatically, uh, um, or I would say, however you say that shit, just like, whoosh, it's time to be a mother. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just didn't have no doubts. I didn't, like, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, I was ready to step up. I'll say that. Even though I'd never wanted kids, I was very, 100% just ready to step up. So, so you wasn't scared? You wasn't mm-hmm. nervous? You were just ready? I wasn't scared. Right. And, I, and I asked other mothers, and they told me, um... I forgot the word that they use, but basically they're saying that's usually what's supposed to happen to every mother, you know, because naturally every woman have that embedded into us. Um, When you do get pregnant, that motherhood just comes to you. It comes natural. And I think that falls back on, you know, when a woman get in a relationship, why she's so prone to wanting a baby, the man, Mm. or wanting to hold his hand or be his ride or die because that, sense of motherhood you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. or nurture nurture nurturing Mm -hmm. comes you know wow so um definitely wasn't scared at all so how is it now that she's older she's more like y'all like that's like you i would say because what i see in your story Mm -hmm. that's like your best friend almost yeah so like what's like y'all relationship like what do y'all do on a day-to-day basis um well i only get to really 
really, really spend time with her on weekends. I'm always busy during the week. You know, I got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I work a lot. <laughs> work a lot. <laughs> that's a, that's the cons of being a single mom. <laughs> you got to work a lot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, to make ends meet. But I hang with her on the weekends, and you know, we go shopping. We got to eat. Go to the park. She loves the park. I personally hate the park. It's too hot. But you know, I got sacrifices for her. Uh, last week we went to the park. I was at it for damn near two hours. She still didn't want to go home. You know, when it was time, I'm like, I've been here two hours. Girl, it's time to go. <laughs> it's hot. But being a mother, that's the type of stuff you got to do. You got to sacrifice a lot of stuff, you know. Um, what else she like to do? She like to paint. You know, she like to dance, listen to music. That's when we are in the house and stuff like that. But my daughter's more of a shopper. She loves to shop. Mm, I see you got her a little purse too. Yo, who you know, two year old with a coach purse? Like, <laughs> she ain't got one. She got two. Oh, like, mom worked hard for that coach purse. Come on, I, I, like, I, I seen it firsthand. Yo, yesterday I brought her her second tablet. Um, when she last year when she turned one, I brought her a tablet. Wow. And um, but it was like the kitty tablet. Mm -hmm. She didn't like it, and I think it's because she knew it was the kitty tablet. <laughs> so kids are smarter than you think, though. What? So she's been making little signs that she want a what you call it, an iPad. Mm -hmm. Um. So I was like, let me just go see how much it costs. And I went to the store for five hundred dollars. Um, refurbished. You're looking at a good three hundred. And I was just like, mm mm, no, you are not getting an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> two years old you know what i'm saying so i went and got her like a little samsung um ipad um which is still a little costly too but it was I feel less still, cheaper yeah, than an ipad it was less cheaper than an ipad and i just feel as though like i could have got it for her but i want her to have something to look forward to as mm -hmm. she get older you know what i'm saying like she already got an iphone you know what I'm saying? I didn't get off on until I had my own job. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> my, my phone, first phone was the, uh, what they call it, like the, the little track phone? Yeah, the little track phone. Little yeah. Phones. You take that to school. Yeah, yeah, I got Put a phone, the minutes you know on it. You be acting bad. Take away the minutes. Yeah. Phone. I ain't putting no minutes on it. Yeah, I ain't putting no minutes on the phone. <laughs> Can't call your little girlfriend, your little boyfriend. I already know. I had that phone. Come I mean, on. a lot of my friends had had a like a regular phone mm -hmm. so i had the chat phone but i didn't want nobody to know i had a chat phone but i wanted to know i had a phone <laughs> i remember one time my mom called me and like literally my phone went off everybody like who got that chat phone like <laughs> i'm looking around no. like not me man. i don't know no yeah but Haley living a good life right She's now living a real good life and this is the life i wanted her to live you know and i think that's why i wasn't scared because when I found out I was pregnant, I was already in a good financial place. Mm. Um, so I thank God for that. A lot of single moms don't have the leverage to say that, you know. So I can honestly say, God, this is for me, you know. Most of and um, I'm grateful for that. Because the life that I, if I was to have a child, the life that I imagined for my child would be this. Okay. Without, you know, not having both parents in the home type shit, you know. Yeah, I did want that for my child because both of my parents wasn't there. So, okay. So, what's like some of the biggest struggles? Because you talk about all the good, but mm -hmm. we also want to hear. We don't. It don't got to be too tough. But what's right. like some of the struggles like you have as a single mother? Because you know it's it's not all peaches and cream. It's you know, not. It's, not, it's all fun it's and games. You know, it's be serious sometimes. Um, well, for me, it'll be more on the mental part you know um my daughter every male figure she sees she do say dada you know she do run to a lot of the male figures like um and this is strangers just we be outside in public she'd be so quick to talk to the guys and that's something i don't like because for one she should know who her dad is he should be around he's not around um and i think that messes kids up mentally more than you think you know like it's good that i could financially support her but she still needs that male figure um, to just be there and, and, you know, give her that princess treatment as every daughter, you know, troll girl should have growing up. Um, so that I would say that. And, um, you know, it's just like I like I mentioned earlier, it's just hard just having one parent. I think statistically, two parents should be in a home. You know, and even if you guys can't live together, I think it should just be both 
the kids seeing both parents in um in their life you know mm-hmm. and it's because like i mentioned it not only messes them up mentally but um emotionally you know like they i feel as though when kids grow up they feel like they got to pick side you know i see my sisters do that now with their father my mom you know with them splitting up he's married she's married and he has his views she has her views you know and it leads the kid in the middle basically feeling like okay should i be more on daddy's side should i be more on mommy's side which one's more right which one guidance should i follow you know stuff like that and i know my daughter is going to go through that okay does she does does the father call no uh, yeah i mean so that's all i'll be banking on just at least a phone call you know what i'm saying like um on the financial side he do send a little money every month um and i think that's just saved his ass but <laughs> let's be real because we're not gonna get to it yeah we're gonna. yeah but yeah. <laughs> um he could do more you feel me I he mean, could yeah. come around more even if to me i don't care about the money even if it was just to pick her up and spend time with her you know communicate um facetime her a little thing i would share my daughter likes to call people on my phone when she don't have her phone um, and she would call you depending on, now I got her on a bedtime schedule, but for the last three weeks, she wasn't on a bedtime wow. schedule. So she was just up on the phone, on the tablet, just no, doing whatever. Yeah. And recently the last call, that's how I know she needed to get on a bedtime, back on a bedtime schedule. The last call she made was to her dad, FaceTime. Mm. And not, not only did he not answer, but he blocked it. Because his fiance thought I was calling. Wow. And when it all down, boils down to it, it was your child that was calling you. And so she probably just, didn't even know she was calling. She but didn't still, even know. It's just the principle of it. So I could only imagine if you would have picked up what would have went on, like through her mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, this is my dad? You feel me? Like, mm. I don't know what could have gone. She's never really seen him, you know? Mm. So, wow. yeah. That's crazy. I mean... I've been through that, so I know like how that feels. So it's it's, it's tough though, cause you don't you don't like as a kid you don't understand. So it's like you're just trying to figure it out. But, right. You know what I'm saying? The mothers. That's why. That's why. This is another reason why I'm doing this. So mm-hmm. mothers and single parents can be able to express themselves and say what they gotta say. So people who are coming up behind y'all can understand the seriousness of this, because oh, yeah. a lot of people are not aware. They're just going through life mm-hmm. and not actually doing their research doing those things that they need to do and a lot of females i've learned um in this generation they feel as it's cute you know everybody wants to be a single mom and the reason why i say it like that is because for one single mothers do get a lot of benefits and for two that is the way um i feel as though having healthy relationships co-parenting all that people not on that shit you know what i'm saying like they don't really talk about that but single parents and it falls a lot with the government and this and that. They have to have a lot of single parents. You know, that's how it's going to have the cycle flowing. But um, it's girls that want babies very bad. And it's okay to want a child, you know, but it's how you get it. And a lot of girls that come to me, it's like, oh, I can't wait to have a baby. I want a baby so bad. I ask them, I'm like, well, do you know this person is for you? Because you don't ever know that man until, until you have a child by him. <laughs> you really don't. You do not know this man. And same thing with a man. You do not know a woman until she have a child, you know? And that's why I feel like it makes and breaks a lot of people. A lot of people, when the kids get involved, is either they come together and do the family shit, or they be like, I, I don't want to deal with this bitch, or I don't want to be with this nigga. Like, you really find out who that person is, you know? Mm-hmm. But a lot of females, they don't have that backup plan. Like, what if you become a single mother? They're like, oh, I get food stamps, or... I go on welfare and I go on this and I go on that and being a black woman, you know, I don't I don't get food stamps. I don't get four C. You feel me? So I just feel as though not only do we have to want more for ourselves as females, but you want to literally have a plan. Like don't just be the statistic. Don't just be like, Oh, I'd be a single mom unless it boils down to the point when you have to by default, someone like myself you know, but if you don't have to, I would say wait, get married, build that stability, bring the kids in. Hey, that's facts. Hey, that's how it be though, because y'all was just about to ask you that. Like, what's your take on like relationships? Like, 
what's your take on that? What's your overall opinion on like male and female relationships? It's good, you know. I've always been for I'm a I'm a lover girl at heart. <laughs> I love love. Um, Everybody say that. <laughs> I do. I love love, and the only reason I say that is because I've been through a lot of shit. I've been through a lot of fucked up relationships, you know. And still, it never made me feel like. F it. I'm going to just play every nigga I see. It never made me feel like that. It just, you know, gave me guidance in life and learned how to approach relationships, how to follow a, a plan of a relationship. I just feel like when you feel like you're ready for a relationship, you have to write down not too much of um, the materialistic of what you want, like how you see a man, but what you want for yourself. What If you want a relationship what are you getting out of that relationship? You know what I'm saying? And you have to go into it like that. Not too much of what, oh, I could, I want a man so I can take pictures and da, da, da. Like, that's not a relationship. It's so much deeper than that. It's because social media got a lot of people's heads wrapped up in that stuff. Yeah. And they see the YouTube couple. They see the yeah. matching pictures. A lot of that should be fake. Yeah, I don't know. It's it be fake. fake. <laughs> I don't Get know. Get y'all some real life shit. Yeah, I don't For know. Real. I think social media is a, a drug mm -hmm. that a lot of people be on yeah and they don't understand that that junk is it's, it's addicting it is it is, is. It? even now I, I have to get breaks sometimes um, as you know my job is based on social media <laughs> i have to literally be on social media every day every talking to day. hundreds of people every day that is my job i'm a real marketer <laughs> to, 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 tell them a little bit about the job because when Man. i had when i had esmeralda on here she didn't talk about it T tell them how no fault work because people think it's a game tell them how i work a little Yo, bit it is it is a real job in a hustle um spin up just saying like that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you definitely hustling to get um to get your paper basically yeah um, make you work yeah definitely make you work um it consists of literally being on social media every day seven days a week and ain't no days off um you coming into the office you're making content you got to be cute all the time your hair got to be right always got a camera in your face like it's a lot and then it's a more of a lot to me because i'm already used to having a camera in my face because i do model as well and now i'm like trying to do the youtube stuff and then having to be back on a weekday you know and be in an office setting make more content and not for myself not on no cute shit but on some real professional business shit gotta speak the part gotta dress the part gotta look the part it's a lot Shout out to one eight hundred and <laughs> Shout out to them boys, man. They make you, they make you work, man. They make you work. I ain't gonna lie, man. Sometimes I go in there and I'm just like, bro, I'm gonna go in how I wanna look, man. I can't. I be tired, bro. It is very tiring. Yeah. But you know, sometimes it be it be good. You know, have a good it's time. It's worth it. Um, you know, when it falls down to the relationships that we built, you know, I met you. Um and you know the setting they they've built it to be more like family like a family setting and it really is you know we yeah, are definitely. a family just like everything that comes with a family we we fight we argue we love each other i don't think i don't think i ever got into it with nobody i know father me personally um that I, I think i've i've gotten probably like like one or two people but just like i said like a family we get into it we voice our opinion i'm gonna tell you how i feel you tell me how you feel and Hey, we move on from here, yeah. and that's how it's I been think, for I me. I think for the most part, I have a good relationship with everybody. That's the first job for though, like that I had a good relationship with everybody. Like I, ain't, it's, I've been there for almost a year. Next month will make a year. Well, no, November will make a year, and Damn. it's like I ain't yeah. Yo, you about to hit your year mark. Yeah. That is crazy. It doesn't even seem that long. It no, it does. <laughs> it does. For me, it doesn't. Like <laughs> I was, I was there. I was when I first got there. It was just a different vibe. I was I was vibing with it, but now I'm really into it. and I'm actually producing, so it's different. Yeah, remember you first got there, you thought I didn't like you. Yeah, you know, but, <laughs> but that's just the demeanor you give off. That is, hey. You didn't even know my name. You was like, hey, boy, come <laughs> in. I'm like, bro, who the girl thinks she talking to? But then once you get one, once I got to know you, it was it was good, good vibes. Yeah, of course. All right, so, so. question. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Have you ever cheated on somebody or had somebody cheat on you? And what was the experience? Or what did you learn from that? Man, I always get cheated on. I should have cheated. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I always get cheated on, like, and I think that boils back to me saying, um, I'm a lover girl, man. Like, and I haven't been in a relationship since my baby father, like a real relationship. So I would say um, I'm a completely different woman. Woman now, my mindset is different, especially having a baby. It's a lot of shit you just not gonna put up with while you in a relationship, you know. Um, but I definitely have gotten a get back one time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, I had to because I was getting cheated on so much. And I was just had to get cheated on and just cry. And don't do shit about it. Just cry. So one time, I think that was the last time I ever got cheated on. I was like, I'm going to get this nigga back. And I did. And I got him back so decently. Had him crying. Yeah, you had him crying? I had him crying. Uh, hey, hey. I had him crying. Because you made me cry, so I'm not going to make you cry. So, so what is your love language? Um, my love language is physical touch. Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't say that. I don't like it when, like, I gotta love you back. <laughs> <laughs> if you just loving me, and I'm like, you know, you annoy me, don't touch me. So it, it gotta be the relationship gotta be built. It got to be a real relationship. Like, we are in a relationship. I like you. You like me. That's a relationship. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. me. And when it becomes like that, I want you to smother me. I'm going to feel love like that. Oh, so you like, you know, you like all your personal space being taken up. Yes, by that one person only. Uh, <laughs> when I, I'm I in the relationship. I don't do I do not do PDA. I only do PDA, like, in closed doors. But, like, when we out in public, oh, we, uh, can uh, hold, uh. we can hold hands and all that. I want to jump on your back. Oh. I want you to yeah, give me a payback ride. Uh, I wanna be on your neck. Oh, oh. <laughs> I wanna be in your skin. Oh. Yes, you feel me? You feel me? We is in love. <laughs> oh. Yes, sir. Don't play with me. And if you're not doing that, you was not for me. <laughs> Respectfully. <laughs> so what what you consider a red flag then? Like, what's something you're a flag in a relationship? Um, I would say too clingy, too fast. Mm. You know? And I've had an experience like that. I went on a date with a guy recently. This is how I know I can't date no more Florida <laughs> men. Um, so if you're from Florida, please do not hit me up. I will not talk to you at all. I, I can't do the Florida men no more. But um, I went on a date with him. And not only was the date trash, but this is the first link and you want to touch all over me, give me a massage, you know, telling me like, basically being a fan. I don't like that because I'm a regular person, you know what I'm saying? And I've I've dated celebrities and they will tell you the same thing. Like, they're a regular person. Like, all that fan shit, that's not cute, you know? So when a man is like just drooling off of you off rip, off the first link, like, oh my God, I watch your pictures every day. You're so beautiful. Oh my goodness. I can't believe you're giving me a chance. That's weird. I'm definitely clipping that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely clipping that. That is weird, bro. I don't know why dudes act like that. <laughs> oh my God. What's like the craziest DM you got, dude? Like from a dude? Because you got a lot of followers. You get a, yeah. lot, of, a lot of interactions on your Instagram. So what's like the craziest? Because yeah. I be hearing girls on podcast. They be saying like the craziest DMs they got. So what's like the craziest DM you got? Um, To me, I don't know. To me, they're not crazy because I feel as though because they're strangers. Well, it's because it's social media. It's kind of weird. But guys, when you out in the club, guys say shit like that to you. On a typical night. So what they say? What's the what's the word? Like you know they'll say some sexual like oh let me fuck <laughs> or uh, let me suck on your toes. You got some pretty toes. How you guys are seeing my toes? I don't know. You must be zooming in real good. But you know just weird shit like that. Oh wow, I don't know. I'll be hearing y'all be talking about the DMs y'all be getting at work when y'all be asking dudes, do you know anybody that's been in the recent car accident? And they be like, man, well I'm trying to take y'all on a date. You want some ice cream? Like, oh, <laughs> Not the ice cream. <laughs> my response be with guys they'll say um 
they'll say, I'm about to get an accident right now to see you. <laughs> or um, just dumb responses like that, you know? And I'm just like, my response be, okay, don't get hurt. Like, hit me up after you're done. Hit me up after you're done. You feel me? Three, two, one, <laughs> three, four. <laughs> I, I need the check. <laughs> For real. So, what's something you would tell like younger females out there? Because we out here trying to give females free game, and mm-hmm. we trying to support. What's something that you want to tell them to you know avoid, or like some something that you know that they can learn from? Um, my biggest thing would be stay away from love right now and get in your bag. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a lot of girls, a lot of young girls, you know, from the ages of 18 to I say like 25, they don't even know how to keep up with credit. You know what I'm saying? They don't really know. They don't even know how to open up a bank account. Like they don't even have a bank account. You know, just little stuff is like that. I feel as though you should already have that. Um, it's so much opportunities out here, and love will come. It will definitely come. So I feel as though within that age range, from the time you finish high school up until 25, you should have a plan to have a home, have established income, have a stream of just different network and things that you already have putting yourself into and just pour all that energy into yourself because once you cross over that 25 age I feel as though it gets hard so you want to accomplish everything that you can before then so once you hit 25 and up then you can focus on love and kids and all that other stuff but definitely while you can get to the Bag, baby. All right, last question before we get out of here. Mm-hmm. Cause I remember me and Keith was having this conversation, and I think you had more time to think about it. So he was saying, why do females decline and men excel when they get in relationships? Why do females decline? Yeah, cause he said females get they lose they stuff they stop yep. going to the gym. Yeah. So they're basically declining while the yep. male is elevating. So why yep. do you think that happens? That falls back to when I said earlier, females are nurturers. You know, and when they get into a relationship, they forget about themselves. That's why I said within that period of time, 18 and 25, put all your focus into yourself because it's no way, especially when you're young, it's no way that you can be in a relationship and focus on yourself. That younger me, that mindset just not there. You're not going to know how to, to balance them two. When you start to get older and realize life and this and that, then you will. You know what I'm saying? But for for to answer that question, um, it is because they feel as though they have to, you know, basically nurture that man, pour into all that energy into that man, take care of that man. Um, and they feel as though by them doing that is he's gonna love them more, you know, oh, she a rider, she gonna do this for me, they're gonna and to be honest, Men don't see none of that shit. Mm-hmm. Men don't see you until you get into your bag and putting all your focus into yourself. That's when they really see you. That's crazy. They're not seeing you when you're running after their ass. It's so many females that's doing that. What makes you different? You running after him? You cooking and cleaning and doing this? No, now you're becoming a slave. You're a slave to love. <laughs> hey, that's fact, though. You feel me? I got to agree to that. So, Yeah. All right, well, tell them where to find you. You guys can go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Kadisha underscore Alex. Um, same thing for Snapchat, Threads, um, TikTok. Same thing, Kadisha underscore Alex. And I am also on Facebook at Kadisha Alex. All right, man. Thanks for Khadija to come into the podcast, express herself, telling us how she really feel. Yes, sir. We're going to bring her back for another one. I want to do a panel, so I'm definitely going to chop it over her about that. But, man, that's all y'all need to see for now. Y'all like, come subscribe on this video, and we out. Yes, sir. Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy, Nate, man. The hottest podcast out right now. What were I think of podcasts? Man, y'all need to go like, comment, subscribe for real, man. This podcast going up. We got we got bangers on the way. A lot of bangers, man. Y'all go view the last two episodes, man. Y'all really vibe with me. And we out.